hi guys it's another wonderful wednesday trust you are having a great day okay guys today we are going to be trying social media poster design okay this is a food flyer design and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to do some creative manipulations on Bezel app here and how to add 3d text effect like it was added here and more other things okay guys without further ado let's get started i'm gonna start by getting a black background and wiping everything off so i'll go back to this interface here below here so i'll swipe up to this white one here this white background here so i click on it it tells me that everything will be lost if i'm to click ok now so i'll click ok right away and everything is lost so i will start by creating my background I'll start by creating my background so i will go over to this interface here this interface is more like where you get tools to work on your background so i'm in this interface now so i'll go over to color to change the color of this background now so i'll head over color i'll head over to this gradient not this color this one means plain color you, you can see plain colors here and this means gradient so this is the gradient i used but for your own sake i will swipe up uh, to a gradient here this is a default gradient which you're going to see on your own so I'm gonna use this plus button beside this uh, ball palette here, this ball color palette. So I'm gonna use the plus button. So I have this arrangement now. This is uh, the gradient arrangement now, and which looks similar to the one we had over there. So we we'll head over to this bottom one, this um plate color plate here, which is this color here. So we we'll click this um, menu below here, which is where we we'll add color. So I'll we'll click on it now. Use this one that looks this menu that looks more like a pencil i'll tap on it now so i'll type in my color code the color code for the red color there is c i told you when typing color code you use capital letter so i've changed it to capital letter now so c21500 so we'll click good button up here you see the color now we'll click ok below and the color is here we'll click ok below i have the color so i'll head over to this other color plate which is this color on top here so i will i'll click on it now so we'll click on this color menu below these are three color uh, this three these six menus here okay so this last one now is the one that is the menu for color so i'll click on it now it brings up the same arrangement i'll click the same pencil looking tool so and then remove the color code so type in the color code for the yellow color i'll make it caps now i will make the um letters caps so the color code for the yellow color is f fc 500 so i'll click ok and i have my yellow i click ok below and i click ok below so this is the yellow now but then this is i told you it was looking similar but it's not it okay look at the gradient arrangement we used this is the one here look closely this one below here this is the gradient arrangement but we are going to arrange it properly because it's not looking properly arranged you see this is is um arranged horizontally why the one we did there was vertical so simply you see this slider here now you're gonna keep this one here and bring this one up now so it look it looks more like a background then has a light that is coming from up that is the idea there looks more like a dark background or some something like a bulb is up and shining below so this is the arrangement now so we'll move this guy a little bit increase the light intensity and we'll click look at the arrangement now we are good so i'll click ok and this is it now so i'll click this good button below now then i have my background color so next is for me to get the image and the phone so i can start manipulating so i'm gonna use the plus button and head over to from gallery to get the stuff from my gallery okay guys here is my gallery and this is the phone image i used so I'll tap on it now and probably i can crop a little amount of it so it's not looking okay so i'll click good button below now and keep the phone then i'll use plus button again from gallery to get the bugger the bugger and the hand the hand that was holding the bugger so look at it here so i'll click on it now and no need to crop this one i'll click the good button below and then i'm gonna place it here but then i, I will need to work on this image like you see the color of this image is looking bright enough and not like the ones the one i did there so i'll go over to this menu here this second interface here is used to work on shapes and image so i'll have tools now to work on this image so what i will do right away is go over to this color filter tool now and then play with all these sliders here so first of all I will reduce the saturation probably to 30 
So then I'll reduce the brightness probably to 20. Then I'll increase the contrast probably to 15. 15. So I'll click good button now. And I'm good with this arrangement now. So then I will shift this guy aside. So over to the phone, you can see that the phone there was mounted. So what we are gonna do there is we are still in this shape interface where you can see tools to work on shape because this is a, an image, shapes and image. So this is a, an image. So we'll go back to this 3D um, rotate tool here in this shape interface, this other interface below, this other interface below now. So 3D rotate tool, I'm gonna rotate it by I'm gonna rotate x by minus 20 so i'm gonna rotate to minus 20. so so we have minus 20 so we have minus 20 now so I'll click good button now so I'll place this guy now so then I'm gonna show you guys a trick on how to add shadows bottom shadows to images whatever sort of images what you will do is you copy that image with the effect you've added in the image so we'll copy this image now so we'll, then we'll head over to the eraser tool this is the eraser tool here in the shape interface now so we use this eraser to increase the size of the eraser and make it not sharp so we'll make it blur so then we, we can increase the handle we can still leave it so we we'll then start erasing erase only the top and leave the below we erase the top and leave only the below so we can just add shadow to it and have the shadow at the bottom so that is the trick on how to add shadow bottom shadows so just erase erase the bottom of the image so i think this is good now this is okay so look at what we have now so i'll click this good, but good button now and you can see it now so i think i mistakenly clicked mouse so you can see it now so then i'll place it at the bottom here make it lap very well so it's lapping now so what we just do we go back to this shadow tool now and add shadow you see the shadow is showing here so what you do is you you offset the y aspect of the shadow so we are offsetting the y aspect um, aspect of the shadow so probably to it like this you see it's off now and it's looking as if it has shadow below so this is a trick i use to add shadow to the bottom of objects so we'll click good now we'll have it now so we'll lock these two guys so we don't touch anything or misplace so we'll put this guy here and then the trick about making this thing enter is what we call maxing maxing in and maxing out so i'm on this shape now so i'm gonna max in and max out so watch right away okay so i will go over to this maxing to look at what it looks like looks more like um a helmet with more like all these baby christmas helmet so you click on it now we own it now so we'll switch over it look it's more like bezier too so just Watch closely. We'll move over to this side. This side is used to work on these buttons here for the max and so and then this other slider, this one that looks like arrows that are dispersing to different di directions. Use it to move the max into. So I'm moving it now. And wherever is covering, Duto is in now. That means anywhere you see this red stuff is in, and that means anywhere this max into is covering, it's gonna remove everything there. But if it's in out, that means anywhere is covering, it's gonna take that content of anywhere this maxim is covering because it's in out once it means in it means it's removing and once it's out it means it's covering okay so let's make it in first so we'll make this line straight we'll move over it's, we are using this one now because we are using it to move so you move over to this one to adjust all these handles so with this grid now we're on our grid tool so we'll get something precise we'll on this grid to look at you on the grid tool and this is the grid lines where you used to work on the grid lines with this one now once you on it as you see i just uh, tapped on it now it's no longer showing as if it's tapped so you can see i can't work on the grid lines but if i tap on it now it changes color so i can work on these grid lines now so this one here is magnet and you can see it's on now so i'll keep this grid line here and keep another grid line here so then i'll off the grid line and leave the magnet on now so let me start working on the maxing tool so i'm gonna place this one here keep this one i need something precise that's why i had to use grid tool 
also I think this one is maxing also so we'll keep this one here you see here here and here is good so here and here is good so I'll click I'll click good now so then I'll copy this shape again this one I maxed in I maxed it in so I'll copy it now and place it somewhere here so go over to that maxing tool again so this time I will max out so we'll max out now so it has the one you see this one now that it max out now so we'll head over to this one that is moving you see this menu is used to move so we'll move this guy to this extent move it to this extent in the same place we max this one so that is what we are moving okay I'm moving I'm moving the maxing I wanted to move the bugger, not the maxing. So I'll just cancel this now. So this is the bugger now. It's here now. So we, we are gonna max max out. So after maxing out, we'll click OK. We'll click this the good button up. So we'll move the bugger to where it was maxed out from. So we we'll use the position to, to place it perfectly where to where it was maxed out. So I'm using the position to now to place it well. So I'm moving up now okay so I'll move left and it's lapping now so then I will head over back to the maxing tool where I used to max out so this is the maxing tool now so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna move this maxing tool this time around so I will go over to this other menu that looks like arrows that are dispersing to different directions it's used to move the maxing tool so I'm gonna need now look right yeah so then we'll move this um this maxing again now so this time around we're moving it left a little to the size of the screen we we'll just created a grid line to size you see this grid line that is in the same side of this screen now so um, i've actually i've successfully done that now so i'll click good now i think i'm okay now with this so i think we'll move it up a little move it up a little so we've moved it up a little okay we are perfect with this so i will off the grid lines and they are off and you can see it's lapping perfectly well but then this hand this is the pink hand that is up let me lock this guy so i can touch what i meant this pink hand now that is showing here i don't want it to show so i can just erase it so i'll head over to this one this first bugger image so so i will use this erase tool in the same shape interface shape interface so we use this erase tool now then we'll zoom in zoom into the hand now so draw our eraser tool now so then draw this one also draw our handle then off this zoom so that we can see the eraser and then we raise this hand a little so i just wanted to erase the hand that was why i had to do that i think i erased too much so i'll go back and use this back to bring everything back so zoom in again and then start erasing off Increase the size, increase the size, and start erasing. I just want to erase the hand, this pink hand that is showing. I don't want it to show in the other one. So I think this is good now. So I'll click OK. So you see it's off now. The hand is no longer showing. So it's off now. Okay, so guys, we are going to get the background, the um, dusty looking background. So use plus from gallery again. Okay guys here is the background here so i'll click on it now and i have it here so i'll click good button so i'll draw this to the stream and go over to this shape interface use my resize tool now to check the size to change the size so it's 98 98 now so i'll resize to 100 100 click good go back to relative position tool which is this relative position horizontal and relative position vertical so i'm good now now, so I will go to send this at the back. You see, it's in the front now and covering some stuff. So I will send it at the back with this tool to the back. That is the name of the tool. You click on it to the back. Look at it. They wrote it to the back below. It's at the back now. So I will then lock it so I don't touch it. You see, it's, it's at the back now. So then I'm going to use the draw tool here. You see, this hand and the rest is not really blended in. It's not really blended in in this background. So we are going to use the draw tool draw to now so we are gonna lock everything so we're gonna lock everything so once we patch 
tap on the background that means we are tapping straight on the background so then you have the draw tool you don't lock every stuff like if you are tapping on an image you won't have the draw tool the draw tool only works when you are on the background so we're on the background now this is the draw tool so i will click on it now so look at some faded red i used to fade some stuff but i'm gonna take a red here which is on default Pixel lab, which you're also gonna see on your own. So this red, you're gonna see it on your Pixel lab. So use the plus button, just next after the next to the balls, the color balls there. So I'll click it now. So what you are gonna do is this slider now, this transparency slider, this last one, just slide it to the extreme, probably close here, somewhere here. So you click OK now. Once you click OK, it's kind of faded now. So that's the color we have now. So increase the pen size, increase the smoothness, just draw them to the extreme. So increase the blur radius to the extreme, on neon effect. So you start painting, you paint from the hand. We are painting the hand now. Paint below the hand. Paint, 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 paint. So you paint below here paint the sides of the phone so we paint again something like this so we paint again something like this so i think we've blended enough so we'll paint the hand again paint i think it's now showing too much so we we'll click ok and then we'll reduce the opacity of everything we've, we've did we'll reduce the opacity a little bit so it's gonna blend in so opacity probably of 80 Opacity of 80. So we'll click OK now. So then we'll lock it now. And everything is blended in. So it's time for us to bring in our text. But then I think our phone is looking as if it's too up. So we'll bring the phone and the hand. This time around, you click this layer to here up here. So you have all the whole layer stuffs here. These are the whole layers here. All the whole images, shapes on the layers. Look at them here. So we'll use this button below, this white button that has some like good and Cancel. so you click on it now you have boxes beside the layers now so you mark all the boxes of the layers the shapes and the images all of them you want to move so you mark them with these boxes beside them so i want to move this phone and this burger together so i'll mark uh, burger mark phone mark burger mark phone because this is the shadow below we we'll have to move it together then you see this second two after this delete one this second two now you click on it Look at this one, it looks like our, our position tool in our, the shape interface. So we'll click on it now and bring these guys down to somewhere here. And then we'll move, we'll move them a little bit to give space from here. So I think this is good now. So then we'll get our text with plus now, text. So we'll double tap on this text and type our text, which is burger burger so we'll click ok and then we'll draw it so it's big so then we we'll head over to the font interface this is the interface for working on fonts and the text a lot of anything typeface okay so this is the interface now we on it now so we we'll head over to this font tool looks more like capital a and small b so i'll click on it now so I have my text now. So I will go back to this recent before because I've actually used the font I used there. The font I used there was Extra Bold Montserrat Italic. So I'll click OK. All these fonts I'm gonna share with you guys on the uh, description link so you get all of them. So don't bother. So I'll resize some way, something like this. So then I'm gonna rotate this, uh, resize it a little bit again. Okay, I'm good like this now. So I'm gonna rotate this to an angle of three. So I'll just rotate three. It's minus seven now. So minus three, and I'm good now. So I'll head over to 3D. I think I did some explanation on 3D. So for those that didn't get it, so pay attention. We are still gonna explore some 3D stuff now. So look at the 3D to look more like 3D, and I still in 3D. So you click on it now. We on the two, and you see it has affected now. So, but this is not, it's not looking cracked, but most of the times when you open it, most at times, often 90% out of 100, it's always look cracked. It always look cracked. So, the remedy is once you own it, once you enable it now, once you enable it, what you just do is go over to this, just slide to the extreme. Once you enable it, slide this thing to the extreme. 
go over to this uh, simulate lightning and off it once you off it now you you it won't be cracked anymore okay so then you can work on stuff simulate lightning is, it makes it look more realistic that is why it's cracking because it can't add the effect on Android higher Android versions okay so it makes it look more realistic so you just off it now once you off it you switch from perspective to oblique so that you can manipulate with the oblique angle if you see the angle of the 3d i can manipulate with it now but if it's in perspective i can't do that so then is darkened so you see this darker now we reduce it to zero so that we can change our own color but before you do that make sure you've gotten the color like you've done the whole effect you want to do do on it so you still be seeing it so you see if i reduce it now you won't be seeing it so let's add effects first before so we'll take this angle to to 250 so we're here so then we'll reduce the depth to probably two or three so a depth of two will be good so a depth of two will be good now so then we'll head over to this color this is the depth color you see what they wrote here is depth color so the depth color is the color of this depth this 3d depth now so we'll move over to color instead of leaving it as auto means it automatically generates a suitable color so you move over to color and then we we'll use this red here this red you're gonna have it on your own pixel lab but probably let's use look at it here this one you're gonna have it on your own pixel lab so what you're gonna do is click on it now so you see this darker now reduce it to zero you see this darker is a zero now so you see the red i have here and i'm tapping is the red i'm seeing here because it's on zero now so i think we are good with this arrangement now we are good with anything 3d now so we'll click good button up here and we are done with it so what we will do now is we'll head over to shadow now so this is the shadow we want to add some shadows to make it look more realistic so this is the shadow tool i'll click on it now so i'm gonna on on it to enable it now so it's in black now so i i taught you guys this trick on the other 3d video i did but we are gonna also learn it here we're gonna use dark red instead of using black as the shadow color look at it this is black therefore shadow color what you're gonna use is dark red if you are adding a shadow to probably a blue color probably just use dark blue so it looks more mature than when you just use black you see the difference now this is black and this is dark red so you see the difference it looks more mature and more pleasing so this is the dark red now and this is the color code here 500 900 is the color code so you can still twerk with it and use something like this so depending on your choice so me i can still twerk with it take it somewhere here and i'm still good i click ok still looking okay so i'm gonna offset it so i'll offset to um y5 and offset to x5 too so i have x minus 5 and y plus 5 so with this offset now i'm good now so i'll click good button okay so i'll head over to the stream i'll drop the stream to this two now this back to this two that they used to send something to. i want to send this text to the back now so it's gonna have this effect now so it's having this effect now and i'm cool with it so i'll move it up i'll move it up I'll move it up so i want to add more text effect to this bugger now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this bugger to this bugger text place it just right above the bugger text also so i'm gonna remove every effect shadow everything so i'm gonna off them off shadow off 3d so it's just a plain text now so what, we, what you're gonna do is go over to texture click the menu this this thing that looks like image so you click on it so it takes you to gallery so what you're gonna do is you choose this text again this um not this text this uh dust background again you're gonna choose it again so you have it this time again you click on it now you see it has added more much effect on the uh, bugger text so we'll click ok now and we'll have what we are just looking for so what is left now is the text the text that i wrote beneath now and some other text here so i'll use this plus button to get the text double tap on it once you double tap you can type in your text you can type in your text wherever with your keyboard now but i think i copied the text in my clipboard so this is the text here it like never before this is the text so i'll just tap on it now please and click paste probably don't bother about this keyboard it's not it's not clipboard it's not every uh, phone that has it so just type it so click ok now and i have the text so i'll draw this to the extreme this is used to adjust the um height and the width of the text not 
of the paragraph let me not say of the text this is a complete this is a paragraph now so if i want to increase the height of this paragraph you see i'm sliding and it's increasing if i want to reduce it i'm i'm drawing i'm sliding again and it's reducing so somewhere here and i'm good so i'll go over to change the font in this app this the same text interface so we'll head over to the font i think the font i use there is medium but it's an italic font so this is it now i'll click ok i'm gonna show the whole resources so don't bother so i'm gonna resize now to 14 that's the size i use for paragraph so i'm gonna rotate it to the same try i did rotate this one so i'm gonna rotate to three again Okay. So this is good boy it, it looks like our phone is kind of covering our text so we are gonna mark the text now the two texts mark the it like never before and mark the other bugger and then we we'll use the same pattern these two below now then use this other two beside this delete this other we'll mark the boxes mark this one also use this other to be beside this delete too so we we'll use it now to move up a little to move first move second okay so i think at this height is good now so we'll click ok now and then this our bugger and our phone looks as if it's big that is why our bugger this our phone and the real bugger image not the bugger text is looking as if it's big that is why our bugger doesn't have enough space so we are going to resize them now the two of them we are going to mark and resize so we use the same pattern boxes now so we'll mark the phone and the other bugger so we we'll use the same two behind or beside this delete tool so we we'll, we'll click this one now this is the resize tool in the shape interface so it's also here now so i'm clicking on it now so we'll resize now so with this size now i think we are good now so we'll mark good now and then mark 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 the four of them and bring them down now so we'll have enough space i think somewhere like this is good now but you can see it has it has distorted everything you see all our this thing has, has changed the hand of our bugger and the arrangement so what you just do is just move them you can move them this together you can move them one after the other but i want to move them together i've marked the hand the buggers and the hand so i mark the two of them now so we are moving the two of them you can see everything is back in place so i'm gonna bring down this other text i'm gonna bring down this other text now so i'm good with this now so it's not looking at my so shift it to the extreme so we align it Okay, it's aligned now so what is left now is our order now so we get the shape plus use the plus button get the shape this is square shape once you click shape it's gonna bring a square a default square shape for you so you use this menu here you click on it you have other variety of shapes you can use so i'll use this and then use this red i created recently for the shadow for the text shadow now so use the red now keep somewhere here and then click good now so i'm gonna move these buggers and this hand this phone and this bugger so this guy is gonna have enough space so we are moving the hand and the bugger so somewhere here is good now so our other now is gonna have a lot of space i just resized it now so then i'm gonna get a new test again or oh, i copy this other paragraph text. this it's like never before so i'll copy it now place it here double tap on it delete the text on it now so you can type in your text but i copied my own in my clipboard you might not have clipboard so just type so i click done and done so it's slanted so we are going to change the effect we'll go over to this rotate to in this same in alphabet interface we use this rotate to click on it now we refresh this thing means refresh this is up now this one means cancel and this means refresh and this is okay we are okay with it now so we've refreshed it and we are okay with it we we'll click okay that's the good button so then the text i used there was a bold text so i'll go back to this font now to recent because i've used it before just look at it monstrat bold so we'll click okay now and the alignment is still left alignment but i'll change it to middle alignment this is the alignment to the root is below align so i'll click on it now middle alignment and then i'm good now so then i start resizing i resize it now 
So I'll resize to 20. And I'm good. Okay, guys, I'm good with this one. So I then move it now to balance it really well. So it's balanced now. So I'll click good now. So what is left now is more like the arrow stuff I added there. So I'll use plus now. You can create it with your bezier tool, but I have it here. I'm going to share with you guys. I created it so I am I have it on gallery as a PNG so look at it here so you can create it with Bezier because I created it with Bezier but I'm gonna share with you guys so you don't bother getting it on how to get it so I'll click on it now I have it here I'll click good button below and this is it so I'm gonna resize and resize I think I'm good so I use the position to to position it and bring it down I think I'm good with this. So I'll copy this other text, this other noun text. Go over to alphabet interface, copy it now. So I'm gonna double tap on it. I want to type in my number. So you can type in with the number with this number section. Or me, I copied my, I have it in my clipboard. So I'll just paste the number. This is my number. Click done and click OK. So then bring it below. Then I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna resize the number. So we'll resize to 16. So we we'll resize to 16. And then we'll copy this other text, this other it, as much as you can. Copy it now. And then I'm going to double tap on it. I want to type in my name for the social media. So my name, promise, promise Sebastian. This is and I click done and then click OK. So, but it's kind of slanted. So, we are going to remove the slant effect. So, refresh. I told you all this in this button here means refresh, remove every effect that was on it. So, the size of the text there was 14. So, I'm going to increase, reduce to 9 or 8. So, let me 9. So, I'm going to move left. So, I'm going to head over to my gallery to bring my social media icons. I'll click good and use the plus button from gallery to bring in social media icons from my gallery okay so this is the social media icon here so I'll tap on it now so I'm gonna crop to actually crop only them I'm having a lot of space here so this is Facebook and Instagram I'm gonna share this these stuff with you guys so you don't bother on how to get it so I'm resizing it now and I'm gonna bring it down to the position to bringing it down now so we are mo I'm moving it now and then I'm bringing it down so I think this is good now so I'll move the promise Sebastian to be to balance well with the, the icons okay, it's good now so I think promise Sebastian was an italic font so we'll go over to font and change to normal font you don't use italic fonts for social media details so this is medium which is medium italic and this is medium only with, without italic that is the font it was on i'll click ok now so guys this is it so we we'll change everything and see whether it's aligned so we we'll use this our grid now to check for alignment so something here is where they all should be so we are gonna move our number so it's aligned and the other now also we are also gonna move it or probably you can increase this bugger so that the the height the width increases so it covers up for the alignment so we are gonna increase the bugger this is the bugger now so we click this button click bugger click the text this is this it now text and use this this um second to you after the delete one you click on it this is for resize which is also the resize to there in the shape interface so we increase the size of the bugger we want it to cover up close to the i think this size is good now so we we'll, we'll tap on it again tap on it again with the same text and then use the same tool and then make it centered so it's centered now so then the two went off alignment so i'm gonna resize the two back to its normal size 15 now so i'll take it back to 14. so move it left 
I think I'm good now. So we'll check for alignment again. So I think this time we increased it. So we'll move a little. So this order now is aligned. So what is left to align is the text. So we'll align the the number, the contact details, and the social media icons are the thing left to align. So I'm gonna align place them to the align. Okay, looking at this now, you can see that the number is big enough for it to is touching this phone which is not supposed to do so simply what you're gonna do in this scenario reduce the size of the number probably to 14 okay so we have the size of our number now as 14 and uh, with the social media icon so with this now everything is aligned so this text now looks as if it's up now so i'm gonna bring it down a little so this it now text looks as if it's up I'm bringing it down now so this is good now and I'm gonna take it back to the back look at it to the back now so it's at the back now so I'll click this layer and it's off now so guys if if you have a creative eye you will see that there is still something left in this design apart from the alignment so I had to leave this for the last for those that love watching my videos to the end okay the poker has a shadow the burger has a shadow which we are gonna add on the one on this one now is look this one not this one so we are only gonna add the shadow on this one so what we do now is we go over to the shadow tool here which is this shadow tool we on it now so we we'll take the blow reduce to 20 take the blow to 20 then offset 9 offset y offset y to 9 set y to 9 so then we we'll reduce the opacity with this plus 2 here now so we we'll reduce this last slide that will slide it to the left so to reduce a little bit of the opacity so i think this is so we we'll reduce a little bit so we'll click ok below look at what it's looking like now so i think this is good okay guys this is it thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to share with this wonderful video if you enjoyed watching it you are not the only person to enjoy this awesome video share with your friends also and don't forget keep creating